Hello, mathematics enthusiasts. We have a great show for you today. We're going to prove that the primes are endless. They're unlimited, but we're going to do it in a very cool way using Merzen numbers and group theory. And I'm sure that 99% of you have never seen this proof. So let's start with Merzen numbers. So the nth Merzen number is like this, 2 power n minus 1. And these numbers are very interesting. So let's compute the first few. m2 is 3, m3 is 7, m5 is 31. Those are all prime. That's interesting. Let's keep going. m7, another prime. Oh, m11 is 2047, and this is not prime. We are back to primes for M13, M17, and M19. Alas, M23 is not prime. 8 million something or other can be factored like this. Neither is M29 prime, you can see here, can be factored. We are back to primes for M31. That's very nice. Now notice that we took here N is always prime. And that's because those are the interesting Merzen numbers. When n is not prime, it's a little bit less interesting. We'll see why in a moment. So why are the Merzen numbers mn interesting? Well, the first thing is that mn is sometimes prime, as we see here, sometimes prime when n is prime. However, mn is never prime when n is composite. So right there, we can actually know more about Merzen numbers than we can about Fermat numbers. For, there's very little known about Fermat numbers. M, N, Merzen numbers have a lot of special properties, and these special properties allow uh, very efficient primality tests. For example, the Lucas Lehmer primality test. So this is how we find these really huge prime numbers. And the largest known prime as of 2024 is in fact a Mersenne number. That's this one. So this N here is prime and this uh, Mersenne number happens to be prime. I think there are only about 52 known prime prime Merzen numbers. We, we computed uh, some of them, and this is the biggest one that's known as of 2024, last year, and probably this hasn't yet been superseded. So this is how we find those huge prime numbers. They're actually special type of prime numbers called Merzen primes, and uh, there's a special type of test that's used uh, to prove that they're prime. Also, every time that we discover a new prime Merzen number, this gives us a new perfect number, a new even perfect number. And this is a consequence of a theorem called the Euclid-Euler theorem, or maybe Euler-Euclid theorem. And it's a really nice theorem, and I think I will do a video on that soon. Finally, we have the fact that the Merzen numbers have special bit uh, properties uh, and this this gives applications to cryptography cryptography and random number generation you may have heard of Merzen twister so uh, Merzen numbers are very very interesting and I I don't just want to define them I want to prove something about it before we go on and use them so let's prove Hmm, what should we prove? Let's prove this one. This is a fundamental uh, property of Merzen numbers. They're never prime when n is composite. So let's make some room and let's prove that. Let's start with the geometric sum formula and rearrange it a bit. We get this. Now let's do a substitution. For x, we will substitute 2 power a, where a is just any integer. We get this. All right, so we have the, this is actually our Merzen number mn if n is a times b. And if a and b are not 1, then this is non trivial factorization. This is not going to be 1 either. Okay, and here I've got some sum. 
which is my other factor. So let's take an example of this. M35, that's 2 power 35 minus 1. So that's some huge number. There are 34 billion something or other. And this here is a factorization of the Mersenne number when n is composite. n is composite because we can take n to be 7 times 5, for example. So a is 7 and b is 5. Let's try that. So I get this 2 power 7 minus 1, and then 1 plus a power 7, uh, not a power 7, but 2 power 7. And, uh, okay, 2 power 2 times 7, 2 power 3 times 7, 2 power 4 times 7. Okay, great. And uh, then I work this all out, and what do I get? This bit is 127. And this sum part here is 270 million and so on. So it works. Uh, M, M, N is never prime when N is composite. Yeah, and now with this little introduction to Merzen numbers, you know a little bit about them now. I'm sure you feel comfortable using them now. So let's use them to do the proof about primes. The primes never end. Let's use contradiction. Let's assume that the set of all primes is finite. It doesn't go on forever. Now the set of all primes is a subset of the natural numbers, so it has the well-ordering property. Yeah, and that means there is a largest, just like you imagine, there is a largest P in this set. Okay, so there is now a largest prime. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to prove the following. We will prove that all the prime factors of the Mersenne number, MP, are greater than P. And this is very interesting. This kind of reminds you a little bit of uh, Euclid's proof, but it's like a really fancy version of it. And I think it's really interesting because we're proving something about all prime factors of MP. So you're proving quite a bit about Mersenne numbers. It's very interesting. So suppose little q is a prime factor of uh, the Mersenne number M big P, where big P is our largest prime. So q divides M big P like this. And we can also write that q divides 2 power p minus 1, like this. And so uh, if we switch over to modular arithmetic, it must be that 2 power p minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod q, like that. And this is the same thing as writing 2 power big P is congruent to 1 mod q. All right, this is, oh, I wanted to use color for that. Hang on. This is the key observation in all of this. This is the key. All right, once you have this, you have the proof. Now, let's construct the group G. We're going to take G to be the mod, the mod Q group oh, that's multiplicative. All right, so QZ mod QZ multiplicative like this. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, you got to watch the last few videos. I'll leave links to them, links to the group theory stuff. Okay, I what I did is I produced a, a bunch of short videos. Well, one of the, them's not that short, but it's just enough material to get you to up to speed in group theory so you understand all this stuff. Like it's like the minimum you you need to know and just watch that and you'll understand everything that I'm doing in this video. So how many elements in this group G? Well, as I said before in other videos that you, you use the Euler totient function and this is phi Q, but Q is prime. Q is prime, so this means, sorry, it's Q minus one. Okay, so phi of Q is Q minus one when Q is prime. So I have Q minus one elements, so my group G is like this, one, two, 
3 all the way up to q minus 1 n. okay these all of these elements are co-prime to q so now that I have this group, I'm going to consider a subgroup X and I will look at this. Well, I don't know if it's a subgroup. For now, let's take it as a subset and I will prove that it's a subgroup. So right now, we'll call it a subset of this, of this group. One, two, one squared, two cubed, well, two squared, two cubed and so on up to two power p big p minus one now how do i know these elements are in g why do i say this is a subset well okay one is in g two is in g but g is a group g is not just any set it's a group and it's closed under multiplication mod mod q and so any powers of an element that's in G is also in G. So two is in G. And so any power, two power N has to be in G also for any. Uh, N is a natural number. So because G is a group, it follows that all of these elements of X are in G. So it is indeed true that X is a subset of G. Now let's prove that X is more. It's actually a subgroup. So what I have here is the Cayley table. Cayley table, the multiplication table. Okay, and you can fill this all in for yourself. Like, you know, this is one times one is going to be one, this two, two squared, and so on. Uh, two cubed, two p minus one, and the same for the upper row. But now let's try an entry like this one here, two p minus one times two p minus one. So two p minus one times two p, two p minus 1. This is 2 power p plus p minus 2 like this. But if you go back, we know that 2 power p is congruent to 1 mod q. That's the key to all of this. And so this is just 2 p minus 2 because this part is 1. So 2 p minus 2. And that's part of the table. 2 p minus 2 is an element of, of x. And likewise, I could do that with everything. Let, let's try this one here. 2 cubed times 2 p big P minus 1. So what's that? Okay, well, 2 cubed times p 2 p minus 1 that's 2 p plus 2 and p p again <laughs> we'll use this <laughs> formula 2 p 2 power p these are like tongue twisters you know but 2 power p is congruent to 1 mod q so this is 1 i get 2 squared so th this is just 2 squared here so all these l all these elements go around and around in a circle and I come back to an element in X. So X is actually a subgroup of G. Why? Because if it has a closed Cayley table like we we just showed Cayley table then that means X is a subgroup of G. There we go. All right, so there we go. And now we use Lagrange's theorem. So Lagrange's theorem says the following. Let's say G is a finite group and X is a subgroup of G. Then I have these two things, the size of X, the order of X divides the order, the size of G. And also we have that g divides the, the the order of g divided by the order of x is the number of distinct cosets distinct cosets of x okay so i will use this part of lagrange's theorem uh, maybe you can spend a moment and think about what would this part of lagrange's theorem imply for our proof. I don't know. I've never <laughs> thought about that. But I'm going to use this part. So we know that x, order of x divides the order of g. There you go. And so what is the order of x? The order of x, if you count all of these, let's go back here. 
from here to here, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to P minus 1. So the order of X is big P. And the order of G is Q minus 1. So big P divides Q minus 1, right? And so therefore, let's think about this. Big P, there's no other choice. It has to be less than Q. And, and this is it. This is the contradiction. So in other words, Q is a prime that's bigger than P. And that's a contradiction. And it's very interesting that all of the prime factors of the Mersenne number MP, all of them are bigger than P. So that's really interesting. So we're done. <laughs> We've done it. We've proved it. There's no limit to the primes. There you go. This is a beautiful proof. I think that this is my favorite of all the ways of proving uh, that the primes are infinite because this is just like a, a beautiful gem, the way it connects Mersenne numbers and their properties to the group theory and Lagrange's theorem. It's just incredibly beautiful. It's like a diamond, you know, it's just a beautiful, amazing proof. And uh, let me know what you think. Do you like this better than the Euclid proof or the Euler proof that I also posted in videos? Well, this was great. I really enjoyed the group theory arc. If there's something that you didn't follow in this um, proof, then just watch a few of the earlier group theory vids. I'll put them in a link. And I will see you next time.